Welcome, uh, Jacopo, to Metalarium Pages. It's a great pleasure um, to talk with you about the about, about Tigers of Pantan, this new this this new album, Bloodlines. I'm more too related to the metal world. Well, thank oh, first of all, thanks for your time. We really appreciate this. And first of all, how are you? Of how was how are you and how was the band during these five years, four years, four years since the well, last? Well, well, we well well we. We, we are human, so we were stuck with uh, with uh, we we, we were stuck like everybody else with the uh, with the pandemic, and we had to face uh, the the debate of uh, first Mickey, the guitar player, Mickey Crystal, and then uh, and then of Gav. So we were we were quite busy because we 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 were looking forward to to pl to playing a lot during 2020. We were supposed to be coming to Mexico also in 2020, and everything just went. Boom! <laughs> disappeared, and uh, after 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 a very a few a, a while, Mickey decided to quit, and so we had to be. Even though we were all in different countries, we had to start doing the auditions to get a guitar player, and we ended up with Francesco, and um, and we thought everything was at that point fine. So we we tried we we, we started to work on really already on song on. Stick quite immediately in September 2020, and we started working on demos and you know bouncing ideas back and forth using tech, all all the, all the tools that technology can give us, and um, and hoping that to, in 2021 we could get together and maybe play some gigs. But this this didn't happen because, as you know, 2021 was as bad as 2020, yeah. and. So by so in two in 2022 when we 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 realized that there was a chance finally to do to do what we could you know to record the album and everything here comes Gav uh, our bass player who says that he's uh, you know after these two years he's not really keen on the idea of you know if everything starts again of touring and doing and you know getting back to the old schedule was not exactly what he was aiming to because uh, apparently he he enjoyed covid because uh, he enjoyed his all the free time that he had so and um uh, lucky him because i i needed money to to survive so <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah and um and um and so we had to find another bass player and the bass player is Hugh Holding who's uh, who's a uh, Who's every, who basically everybody, even the record company, uh, kind of recommended us. He was he was uh, he he played in a lot of uh, uh, new wave of British heavy metal bands from the northeast of England, like Blitzkrieg, Avenger, and uh, he was at the moment and just concentrating on playing in a, a Iron Maiden tribute band. And he would and he, he and apparently he had been he had been saying that he was missing to to missing uh, to to you know to 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 play original stuff and so he so we there was there was actually not real audition we said are you willing to join the i mean can, can, are you interested in joining tigers of pantang and he said yes yeah. so that, that was it and in 2022 we recorded the album we recorded the album also unfortunately we recorded it still like um, different not together meaning the the three the three that's the three uh english boys had had the time to get together and do this, their stuff but me and francesca had to record in uh, in our hometowns in what i mean florence and uh, francesco in his personal studio so in sardinia and here we are and so that was august september 2022 you have to wait a long time but finally the album is out and uh we we've been already playing uh playing live quite a while and we we have uh, played uh, some of the new stuff live, and they seem to go pretty well down, pretty well, and they seem to kind of, kind of, uh, gel together to the, to the, to the, to the, you know, to the vintage and the more, uh, you know, historical material. So it's pretty good. So there's not there's not a fracture. No. Okay. Okay. We're happy. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. A lot of history. For once, after two years, we're happy <laughs> because we play. We got an album out. We can, we can play. We can, rec and, you know, we can enjoy. We can. We, we were missing. We were missing a lot playing live. We were missing a lot playing. Live. I was missing a lot playing live. I like traveling and I like, I like playing live. I think 
I think um, there's nothing. I think if you want to be a musician, you want you you have to enjoy the life on the road because that's where you get the best and the worst. But the mix is fantastic. You know, you know the it's it's always worth it. Mm, okay, okay. So nice, nice to hear a lot of histories of road for to release this new album. <laughs> a lot of things happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well. We, we seem now it's 2023 we seem to have for, for, forgot what, what happened in you know in 2020 and 21 but it happened and it happened and it was real uh, <laughs> and but luckily it's the past you know that that's the good thing about humanity humanity can tend to you know one once it's gone it's gone so we have new new frontiers uh to 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 explore oh, okay so um... Uh, but I, I, you explain me everything about this new album, but the next question will be. No, about... you can ask. You can ask oh, more you... questions. I mean, you know, <laughs> well, well, I sure. am not. I'm. I am not. I'm not a yes no. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't worry, don't worry. So, but we try to relate the bar some questions that I that I had. One, but relate with the, the info that you got me. And so, uh, how 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 many differences would we will find this in Blood Litter compared to the Ritual? Well, okay. Well, I think the title sums it all, because Bloodlines is we we decided to use that that to use that title Bloodlines because we wanted to make clear that you know t the Tigers of Pantang are the result of all the different incarnation of the band. So there's a, there's a Bloodline that goes from Wildcat to to to, to days today's new album and every every member who has been in the band has contributed to to keep keep the 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 band going and to keep the band evolving in a way so i think ritual was a great album i think ritual was a great album it was um, we wanted to have we wanted to 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 uh, we wanted to produce a heavy album so we wanted a more a very a more heavy metal sound and I think we achieved it. And I think we got in, in that album some really great and strong songs. And, and um, the, the musicianship that we had in that album is, is really good. It's really good. As, as you know, and um, it, it, was not, it was not an easy album to record because the, the, musicians, the, musicianship in the or, or, musicians, musicianship was there, but there were... The way we recorded and uh, and it was not it was not easy. It's the kind of things where you know um, whenever whenever you, whenever a musician hears an album, he remembers also you know the behind the scene things. So and um, but I'm really proud of it and uh, and I'm really glad that that that, that of because it, without ritual probably there wouldn't be, there wouldn't be a blood lines because mm -hmm. I think that there is there is a uh, an element of, of uh, um, I, I call it evolu evolution, but mm. there is a connection between the albums. And um, the thing that the thing that we wanted, the the, the, the things that we always wanted, and and this is the thing that I, I always my my personal goal since I'm since I I joined Tigers, and you know it's going to be it's going to be twenty years in yeah. a year, so it's twenty years that I'm in Tigers, is that I. I I always felt that the, there was a way to put together the two different aspects of the band, which is the you know the rawness of Wildcat and the polished and more uh, not commercial but more uh, the, the big choruses and the more um, AOR thing that we ha was uh, was at the cage. I thought that there was a, a way to put them together yeah. and to create a sound that could could work out because if you listen to the live albums of that era uh, during the cage, they were playing, they were playing Paris by air and then they were doing euthanasia and there was no problem. So, because it was all live, you know, you know what I mean? So the, the sound was there. So, but they never, they were, they were, they were never ever, they were never ever, I would say able to capture a sound that would put them, put these elements together. So that was the work on on bloodlines. That was what 
uh, we all we were all aiming and trying to do and that's the reason why we have song like for me one a good example is is uh, edge of the world or bloodlines that they start heavy and really heavy and uh, powerful but then they have a chorus that is kind of more open and it's more mm -hmm. and it's more singable sing along as a sing along chorus mm -hmm. it's more catchy and without losing without losing the the power and the edge of the of what has been before the chorus so that 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 was that was the the, the main the main thing and um and um, we were lucky enough to have you know we 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 were suggested to have two madsen as a producer and uh and it was the record label who suggested two because our record label mighty music is from denmark um, two is yeah. from denmark and uh and i think he he understood perfectly what we wanted to what we wanted to to reach to achieve and reach and um i think he's has surprised a lot of people because he's very well known for more you know heavy and uh, uh heavy and uh, extreme metal but for this album i think he's done he has done something really special because i think he has enchanted these elements perfectly so the album is 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 powerful as a head it has an edge but when it opens in the chorus and when it's come it, it, it gets more um uh, i would say yeah more hard rock you can mm. feel it okay yeah well yeah that that, that is true that's true it's, it's this new album for me is this, this new album bloodline has a lot of textures especially from all eras from the rock and roll and heavy metal I didn't know from rock and roll, from influence from Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin. Then you have a lot of hate metal into the music. And then for a curious by this this approach sounds is your voice in some songs are has has this alternative way to see. It's more modern as compared with the previous stuff of the bands, has a lot of modern stuff. So that's why uh, I relate your music with the 80, well, 70s, 80s, and 90s because the alternative met, well, alternative rock or metal appears well, in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be sure, well, to, to, to be to be uh, absolutely, you know, um, clear, uh, the, uh, the the effect on Edge of the World was something that I I, you know, I, I, I never thought about it, and, and I was worried about that song because I thought that I, I am not an heavy metal singer by no chance. Because I don't have that, you know, epic kind of. I, I, I love listening to Dio. I love listening to. Uh, I love Bruce Dickinson, but I also am truthful. I I, I cannot compete with the with that kind of yeah, approach. Range. Okay, yeah, yeah. range and approach, and th that kind of uh, you know delivery. I I am more as a as you said. I'm more I'm more from the seventies. I'm more like a. Uh, comes from you know David the David Coverdale, Robert Plant, uh, Phil Mogg, that, that that kind of stuff, and uh, so I will I was a little bit worried because I thought oh uh, I did my best but I don't know if I was able to you know be epic enough and then Two Madsen had that wonderful idea to put that kind of reverb and that uh, like uh, that kind of effect on my voice that I thought oh that that makes it happy that makes it interesting that makes it more you know kind of more in 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 sync with the with the music, but uh, and for the for but apart from that, uh, meaning like back for good is a is a one take recording. Meaning yeah. I recorded that in one take, start to finish, and I did some other takes. And then I was looking, I was with the with my engineer, and we looked at each other and we say, you know what, we'll take the first one. That's perfect. So in, in a way, it was it's we it is it, it it's it's strange because. Sometimes it's just very direct, and I think "Back for Good" is a good example. Of, you know, that's that's a very you know in your face, easy, straight, direct song. And uh, you, I, I think the fact that is that I have recorded in one take, it you know it it uh, it gives even more that feel, like a live feel. And that was it, and that was it. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, but, and obviously I was born. I was born. I was born in 1968. I'm 54. So me, I, I'm a, I'm in great love with the 70s. But I was, I started to, I was well, I started to buy records 
in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> so the 80s were there, meaning the 80s, even if, if I don't think about it, they are in my mind, meaning I, I cannot... I cannot escape from the fact that I've been I've been in the eighties. And the other thing is that in the eighties, in the eighties, with with all you know, Europe and Bon Jovi and Motley Crue and that kind of music, uh, for once here in Italy, I were for once I was listening to the music that a lot of other people were listening because before that. I was a metal. I was a very strange metalhead that people were looking at me saying. Ooh, what is he listening to? Then all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden Def Leppard came around and everybody was listening to Def Leppard. And I say, well, I've been listening to Def Leppard when nobody even knew who they were in Italy <laughs> way back in early 80s. And now everybody loves them. Mm, interesting. But I was, but, I, but that, that's, that, that was a special time in my life where I don't, I didn't have to uh, insist or, or you know prove, try to convince people about my musical taste everybody seems to be in the same uh, wavelength yeah. so that was relieving and then then the 19s came and a lot of and then that was a strange strange time the 90s really yeah. strange times yes, a lot of good a lot of good stuff but then a lot of uh, a lot of uh, of of music that I liked when they when it came out, but that but now I I really struggle to listen to. I, they, they sound more old than something from the seventies. Meaning, uh, I can listen more to a Black Sabbath album like Paranoid than something from the nineties because of the sound. It's a bit too. It's like it's yeah. very nineties. <laughs> yeah, it's very nineties. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Well, also this is the first album with Francesco and Ho. So how, yeah. How, how was the yeah. experience of recording a new album with this new lineup? Well, Francesco is ha, had a key role in this in the in the recording because uh, Francesco, Francesco and Francesco and Rob really got together musically and you know as person very well. They seem to understand each other, and uh, and they and also. According to Rob, it is the first time that he really felt like he had a like a, not only a partner but somebody who, who who really understood what what he was trying to do. So and he in um, so basically, what I would say seventy percent of the of the album it, it it comes out from Rob's riff well, from a Rob's riff to which uh, Francesco me Craig basically our four because when we started recording Gav was still in the band so you at the end of it he recorded he just contributed as a bass player so he and but he he played his own bass lines but he didn't contribute in the in the writing of the songs not this time but he will do it next time. Mm -hmm. The four of us, then, you know, everything starts from a rock strafe more, most of the time, and everybody in the band contribute. And Francesco is the he's perfect in taking that riff and understands it and uh, add a part to it and then take something else that Rob has written and, and, and all of a sudden... A song is out. So Francesco played a very important role because he he was able to take a riff in, to to make a uh, make a riff into a song, basically adding what was missing or and and, uh, and uh, what was needed, and and also he was the he was the one who forced and I I mean it forced uh, Rob to play more solos because he said we are two guitarists, I have my style, you have your style. I think the, the you know the both of us you know a solo split in two is more interesting than mm -hmm. then just have one solo. So there's a lot of twin solos like twin solo like first part and second part that are done by you know with the two different sound and two different approach, which I think um, I think fans will like because uh, it's it, it goes back to the old tradition you know it goes back to the old tradition sax and iron maiden where mm. every every guitar player had his own uh, you know yeah, specific sound yeah, yeah. so you could recognize even without reading or like Judas Priest oh this is KK Downing this is Glenn, uh, this is Glenn Tipton so 
So I and and for the first for the first time ever, it was it was uh, we had more time to write the songs. We had more time to do demos. So it was quite it was quite re it was relaxing and also you know it was during COVID, so we had something uh important to do while we were stuck at home so that we were all very very happy about it because we, we oh yes to, I, I can work all day on us on a couple of songs and uh, so it was it was a very nice nice and fluid um uh, process we ended up recording uh, uh, well writing 20 songs we record we, we we demoed all of them and then we did we did a second pre-production uh, of 13 and these 13 are the one that we recorded and then we have used uh, 10 in the album and one went in the ap and there's two bonus tracks that eventually will be out mm -hmm. okay okay well more, more history nice nice yeah. tigers of pampa or tigers of pantan are probably the one belongs to the best generation of heavy metal bands and while some bands live from the past and all albums are still delivering great records because this last album is a great one too. So how do you Thank manage you. to create something fresh, some preserving your own sound without sounding too predictable? Because there is always a risk of repeating yourself too much after yeah. many years of the road. Well, uh, it's it's a tough question. Well, the first thing I always I, well I always say that. We are not a déjà vu band. So yeah. if you just want to hear something from the past, go and listen to the old stuff yeah. directly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we are an, we are stuck in the present. We we like to be in 2023. At the same time, we feel the heritage and the respect that many fans has from the past. So we always try to balance this thing. So we want we wanted to write something. We want to write songs that are that represent us as we are now, but at the same times, at the same times, they can kind of go along with with the rest. So, and uh, it's not always easy because sometimes yeah. sometimes you have to maybe you know. Uh, as I said, we record, we recorded, we, re we we demoed at least 20 songs, and probably there are some songs that we left over that were good songs. But at the end, we were we were all thinking they don't sound like tigers. They're a little bit more too you know, like too different. You have to we have meaning we have to in a way we have we have a uh, I think we all the five of us have know now. Uh, within which you know within uh, how much we can experiment so uh, in in an album but we you have to have some distinctive sound and i think the sound is the the, the core thing and see and whatever there is rob involved this it, the, the the album will sound tigers because rob way of playing rob's riff they immediately take you back to that time he was there he wrote the songs meaning he wrote uh he, he he wrote uh, take it or he wrote uh, you know he wrote uh, running out of time and uh, so he was there when he wrote the whole the whole euthanasia meaning the whole wild cat album was just one guitar player and he wrote it he wrote all the riffs so he was there for sure and um but at the same time as i said we are a present man we need we need to to add to uh, to add something that it make us feel it's our album, meaning our album of not just Tigers, but also of the members who are now in Tigers. And that's the reason why we allow ourselves to do, to play some, you know, a little bit of different, add something a little bit different, like making all the rules, the last yeah. song on the album, which is a little bit different from, from, you know, what you would expect from Tigers, but it's still Tigers because... <laughs> Uh, there's me on the voice, and I'm being I've been in the band for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, still, Craig, uh, who's been drumming, and he, and he wrote the song because that that's making all the rules. It's mainly a, a Craig song uh, to which both me and Francesco added bits and pieces. And uh, and that's Rob, meaning Rob is there. So when every time he hit the chords, that will make it sound like Tigers. Yeah, and that is it. Yeah. 
So uh, speaking of this golden generation of heavy metal and where Tiger Span Pan Pan was born at that time, many of the bands from that era can play with new, can play or, or mix new things. Well, as I said, no, this new album has a little touch of alternative things from the 90s. But the bands uh, that were born with your with your influence just copy and paste that you did in the 80s and 70s, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And even bands dressed like you at the 80s. This is very curious, the new bands. It'll dress dress like the old bands. I know, I know, I know, so, I know. No, no. And so bands from the 80s and 70s, uh, oh, why do you think the always these these new bands, or even Tigers, Tigers of Pantan, can bring new things into the music compared to the, the new band? The new band just copy and paste. Don't don't create well, more. Just well, oh, just because if you listen to the last album from you, last Iron Maiden, they still bring something different than the yep. that you did in the eighties or seven, or that they did in the seventies and eighties. But if well, you hear a band like Influence with you, Tigers of Pan Pan, Angel Witch, um, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Saxo, all new bands are the same, like the old seventies and eighties. Uh, uh, well, it's it's a good question. I, I can't I can't really tell you why. What I what I may suggest is that uh, when we start when I started and when Rob started, okay, uh, we all wanted to write new stuff. Meaning when I started and I joined the first band, all we wanted was to write new new songs, meaning our songs, no covers. And it doesn't matter if they were good or bad, but we wanted to write on, you know, original material. And then we added some covers because we wanted to make uh, the set list a little longer because we had only four mm -hmm. songs. Let's put another a couple of covers so that we can have you can play half an hour, 40 minutes. What I think happens now, a lot of a lot of musicians now, they they start playing covers. And then at one point they start writing their own stuff. Yeah. But when they start writing their own stuff, having having they start thinking that they have to follow straight away uh, a kind of cliche, uh, a rule, the rules, and and that's probably the reason why. Because when when I started playing, you know, even if I already had you know my heroes, I had Queen, Led Zeppelin, ACDC, I never had in mind to try to copy them. I just say, okay. I write what I can write, and if and I, if it sounds like that, it's because I just love that music, and it happens. But I never thought, okay, let's write a song that sounds like Led Zeppelin, or that sounds like. And I think nowadays that that's the thing. People people are more they play better, meaning a, you know, yes. in a way, at, 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 at sixteen year a sixteen year old guitar player now can play better than. A 16, 16 year old guy in the seventies, yes. for sure. Yeah. But the guy in the seventies had more freedom and more, you know, more freedom of choice, more inspiration. He would experiment. He would try to play, maybe doing something terrible, wrong. But he would try to play. A musician now, he wants to do everything perfect at the yes. first, you know, at you know, at the right, the first thing perfect. I, I am a t I am I'm am a, sing uh, well, a singing and, and a music teacher. And what I say to the guy, to, to my students, that your first, you have to play, you have to write your first song. And the process will be you write your first original song you think is a masterpiece. And if everything goes right within a month, you think it's crap, it's shit. And you write a second song. But that second song will never come out if you hadn't write if you hadn't written the first one, because the first the first one is the one that makes you understand that you can write a song and you can be proud of it, and the feeling that you will have in those you know when you finish the song the, your first ever original song will be so so big and you will feel so good that you will want to write more songs. And it's and the second song will be better than the first one. The third song will be better than the second one, and so on and so on. But and and you have to and, and the other thing is you have to have at the beginning just play whatever you want. Don't don't think because 
uh, that's you make me remind me of, of a thing. Once I asked a guy, I asked um, um, a student, say, uh, uh, what kind of songs, what what kind of song would you like to write? And he said, well, it has to be radio friendly. It has to be uh, at least three three minutes, three minutes thirty. It has to it has to have uh, a special kind of a special a special you know sound of the guitars and everything. So he was. And I said to him, look, you're telling all the details, but you're not going to the core. What kind of song? It's going to be a fast song, a slow song, a love song, a hate song, an angry song. Mm. I'm not asking. He, you're doing the arrangements, but you don't have the, you're doing the arrangement because what you're saying to what you're doing, the arrangement, you're thinking about the arrangements and thinking about what a producer would do without still having the song. So that's probably the reason why. So people start thinking, oh, we have to write an heavy metal song. So this is the kind of drum sound. This is the kind of riff. The riff has to be this, this, and this. Cannot be something else. And the vocals should be this and this. So they're predictable because they think they have to um, um, follow a formula. While the original bands never, fought, never, 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 <sighs> Never, ne never follow the formula. Aaron Maiden didn't follow. They play what they like. Yes. Saxon, they play what they like. They, they didn't care. After after five or six albums, then then the the possibility of start thinking that you can have a formula is there. But after five or six albums, so it means like a uh, ten years, <laughs> ten years oh. of career. Yes. So you've done it. You meaning you 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 have you have set the path. If if you start thinking like this when you just you know you're just at the first album, that's where probably that's why you get that kind of uh, strange feeling that everything is uh, predictable. Yeah, but they're good live. The the good the the, th the other thing about about the new bands, they're really good live. I have seen a couple of new bands playing live, and they're really good. They're really good playing live. It's the problem is I agree with you, and then you listen to the album. It's like oh, they were great live, but the album, it's a bit... the album is the same. <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was talking about from the promotion of this new album. And um, what are the future plans that the band has for this new album, Bloodline? Perhaps you will embark on a European tour. Well, yeah, US yeah. Tour, Australia, Asia. Oh, well, you told me the first question and the first answer of the first answers that you 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 were planning to play in Mexico well, uh, yeah. three years ago, but the pandemic canceled everything. And perhaps you will reschedule this. We're Latin trying America to tour. reschedule everything. We, we we almost reschedule everything that was in the past. We're gonna apparently, finger crossed, we're gonna play in, in Mexico in December. This year, okay. First weekend of December. That's that's what should happen. But, but you know, I'll tell you when I'm in in Mexico. Okay. Just before going on stage, uh, I'll send you a text message. Say, oh, we're oh, playing. <laughs> now that yeah, 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 yes, we're playing in five minutes. It happens. But and um, yeah, we 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 just ended up a small mini tour in the in the Scandinavian countries. We played Copenhagen, Sweden, and Oslo. Uh, great fun. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave Italy next week to go to England and play a festival. Then we're going back to Germany. Then we're going to um, Spain, a rock imperium, a very big festival in Spain, in um, near near Alicante. And um, so we, we're pretty busy during the summer. The album sales are doing quite, are doing really well. I can't say anything because. You no, know, the record label has said you can't say anything. But tomorrow there will be a press release uh, telling telling everybody how 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 well it was received uh, in um, uh, block lines, and, and uh, so and we hope we have everything scheduled. Most of it scheduled until there's some gigs uh, until September. Then some gigs in October, and then Spain, uh, Spain uh, sorry, Mexico in December. And we hope to add some other 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 uh, gigs on the way. They said it's not easy because everybody say now everything is back to normal, but it's not really back yeah. to normal. Yeah. It's uh, touring is very expensive. Yes, because yeah. you know, prices have changed drastically, 
and uh, the fees are the same and the prices are getting higher so it's not easy it's not easy we're doing our best but it's um it's really it's really tough it's still really tough we would love to come back to to brazil because we, we we've been there and we had fun and and we played uh, yeah we played mostly in brazil then we played uh, in um in, uh, in Colombia and Paraguay. Paraguay, okay. Paraguay, yeah. It was two, two, two weeks, inter interesting two weeks. Yeah. Lots yeah. of fun, lots of fun, <laughs> lots of fun, yeah. Okay, no, talking about other aspects, we spoke about the band, the history, the fans, the, the new album is more big, more big rules, has a lot of textures into there. Now, obviously, um, as I said in the first question, the music industry has changed a lot through the years. How do you see the rock metal scene nowadays, considering the impact of digital platforms? And also, now we have the artificial intelligence that can you use to compose music and create cover arts. So what do you think is going to happen with this? Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, streaming is there. We have to accept it. This is not a fake background. Uh, I am I am a music collector. This this is just part of my exactly. <laughs> so and if if I turn there's there's CDs and vinyls all the way. So so I will still buy. I still I have Spotify, but I still buy a record. You know, I listen to Spotify. If I like the records, if I like the music on Spotify, you will buy the record. Yes. I, I buy the record. Okay, and it sounds different because uh, I had the proof today. I've been listening to an album only on Spotify. I really liked it. So I said, I'm going to buy the CDs. And when the CDs has arrived and I put it, it's like, whoa, the album sounds three times better than on Spotify. So this said, streaming can be useful, is a useful tool, but by 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 the vinyl, by by the CDs, it sounds better. If you like music, it sounds better. Yes, it's better, it's better. and also and also you ha you get the full experience. It's not just about listening, because otherwise music becomes a background. You have to dedicate time to listen. It means that you don't have to do, you know, you have to sit and listen to the music. Maybe you know having the you know the vinyl, you know cover, looking at the vinyl, reading the lyrics and everything. It's not about it's not about just you don't have to cook. You don't have to listen. Well, you can listen, but you know sometimes it's nice to have music as the main experience. And this is it's difficult for the young generation because they're not used. The young generation don't have records. The younger generation don't have CDs. They don't even have CD player or vinyl player yeah. unless they are really into music. So, but most of the people they're not. And so for them, music is still a background. It's just a background. Um, the metal scene is, is I think, is, is a little bit more protected because uh, metal heads, headbangers, how you want to call them, they are very loyal and yes, they yeah. like oh, yeah. and they like to collect and they like to have their own vinyl and they like to have you know to get have their vinyl, you know, at concert and get it signed. It. So they like to have something physical. And we are lucky enough that we have uh, that we have a country in Europe called Germany, that it's 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 the one country that still proves that there is a, a market for metal more than any, at least in Europe because that's all the record labels are where all the distributors are, and that's where you can tour because there's still venues and there's a still there's still an audience who's willing to to pay to come and see you. I when in, well, England is a little bit more different. For for example, it's it's not as easy to tour in England yeah. because there's two, there's a lot of cover bands, a lot of a lot of venues. They are either closed or they either have you know forced themselves to to like ded dedicate uh, two third of the of the of the of the program to 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 tribute bands and one third to original music. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's more people co going to see uh, ACDC tribute than uh, to see an original band playing, which is for me is strange, but mm -hmm. that's what what people want. They want they want the predictable. They're not they're not more any more willing to 
to go and to go and have the chance and and you know they want to go there they want to go somewhere pay to get exactly what they want like exactly what they want they're not more any more willing to get the risk of going to see a concert of a band you don't know and you might love it or you might don't like it but still you're going to see it, something new something different and uh, a lot of people now they they just want to go and see oh it's like you know i just want to see something that i i know exactly what is going to happen i know exactly i know all the songs and that's that's also the reason why you know big bands still go go very well because obviously you know iron maiden will iron maiden wherever they go they will always be sold out not only because they have they they produce good music but also because people know that they will get you know the yeah. exactly what they expected and they will they will get their songs that they they would they want to hear and uh, and that's 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 the thing meaning and we grew up probably in in, in a time where we would go to a, to to a venue without even knowing who we were going to listen meaning i remember how i discovered motley crew i went to i want i uh, um i went to go uh, i went to see iron maiden power slave tour 19, 1985 and before them motley crew opened uh, and they played 40 minutes and i was completely kind of uh i don't know even i i i i, I keep saying i didn't un i didn't hear anything i mean i cannot say I, that i heard everything but uh the look the attitude the sound everything it was so fantastic then you know the day after i was into the record store by shout out devil because it was like wow I I love them, and I, so yeah. Uh, a few uh, yeah a few months ago, I I read an an interview with Jeff Scott Soto about the about now well obviously about the the book the the boys that is all has a lot of I don't know this has a lot of weird away as a weird down when you use a lot of time singing alive you 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 can use the I to tune parts to 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 do a better show in life. So if you can if you go to the a new I I remember when I go to the last show to the motor crew at the end at the beginning of in February here in Peru, I remember the um, the that the the, the, about the the motor crew front man use a lot of auto tune a lot of feedback. It's, it's normal because and Jeff Scott Soto told told everybody. That is when you sing fifteen songs, twenty songs live, always the ball the voice will will away. It's normally because moving around the stage, sing louder and have a lot of repercussion. So what is your opinion about now? A lot of musicians are using the well, are using the, the, the technology to to do to support the voice with backing vocals, etc. The technology in general. Um I never did. So, uh, and uh, and the proof of it is that I, well, I, I had a very, a very, on the last gig in Oslo, I was, I, my, really had, I had fever. I had a tonsil that was really like uh, injured and was really, uh, and I was really hurting. And, but I, I, I went on stage and I knew that I couldn't be 100%, but, it's you know there it, it, i know the repertoire i can i can handle it that's part of being a singer you know you you know you know what to do and for me the best example for for everything is freddie mercury freddie mercury in stu in the studio could do everything i mean he could play any he can he can sing any note yeah. possible and he was fantastic. He had backing vocals and everything. But then when he went live, Queen were a rock band. So they were they had less backing vocals. And also to preserve his vocals, he was not doing he was he was, you know, he was adapting his part to a more, you know, if not easy, more um useful way to sing that was more in in the vibe of playing live. So that that was it. 
so I, I'm old fashioned. I'm old fashioned. Uh, and, you know, having backing vocals, it means that everything has to be on the click also. So everything has to be fixed. Mm -hmm. So so the songs has to be always the same. You cannot, you know, cannot have a longer solo. You cannot have this. You cannot have that. So coming from the 70s and liking, I like the, I like the, the, I like the the live vibe. And I, I won't judge somebody if he if he if he struggle if he if he makes a mistake. Uh, the thing that I don't the thing that I don't like is when it's clear, and I won't say the names, the names of the singer or the name of the band, but there, when it's clear that a singer cannot sing anymore, it's, yeah. his voice is gone, finished. There's no there's no voice anymore. Yeah. That's the good time to say bye. <laughs> <laughs> I retired instead of going on stage and struggling and then then and then you put back in extra backing vocals extra singers or then you put you know and you know there there are a few big bands where where there was the, I, I still I, I don't i don't say because i'm a great fan of both uh, and all, all of these bands i'm still a great fan but uh, when i hear somebody say you know i'm 70 so you cannot expect uh, the same kind of uh, gig that I was doing in the in the 80s or in the 70s I say yes I do I do that but you charge a lot of money saying that it's going to be the best shows of your the best show of your life and uh, so you have to you know that's for me a best show has to be has to be honest and uh, you can make the mistakes I'm not I'm not I'm not scary about hearing like a fate or like a not the right pitch or hearing hearing a singer not doing the you know the high the high screen what he's supposed to be doing but playing the best he can and that's it mm -hmm. um it's it's and but you know but when when you have a production like two million or million production every, you know a million production thing so you can you can name the, the you can name the band that i'm thinking about mm. obviously there's so much money involved that you have to be perfect mm -hmm. and that's when probably people start thinking about using backing tracks and everything because that's that's so everybody will be happy mm -hmm. because they paid you know 200 dollars for a ticket <laughs> so and if you the, if the if a guy if somebody who play who pays 200 dollars for a ticket is not happy it's it's not good. It's mm. it, it 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 comes back. It's like a you you're gonna have a boomerang. Yeah. So that 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 that's it. Well, At I the same time, I think I think when you get to 75, 76 and you're a singer, there's there's nothing wrong in saying you know in saying you know I cannot sing anymore these kind of songs. I'll sing other songs of my repertoire, or when it comes really to an end, just say I cannot sing anymore. I'm sorry, and you know. Mm. It's yes. time to retire. Yes, uh, but but and the other side of the coin is I I, I spoke a, a few a few a few vocalists more is that there is but it's normally that this kind of that the kind of frontman use the technology to to seem better live etc. And he thinks that the, if you use a lot of technology but and the people are happy with the technology, the playing the old songs this kind of stuff is. Everything, everything is well, re well rewarded because the well, yeah, 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 sure, sure. But the, the thing, the, there's two things. The first, the first thing is that it's the question you have to ask yourself: Would I want to have, uh, you know, an auto tune? And my answer is no. I so far I prefer to be honest and and go on stage and play, give every 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 inch of my of myself, giving hundred percent of my energy, and sometimes. Sometimes it comes out a big show, a nice, you know. Sometimes I get off stage and I'm really happy. Sometimes oh, I could have done better and anything, but um, but that's that's it. Obviously, I'm talking about when Tigers go go, go on tour, they don't have a big production, so they, we're not we're not so everything changes when there's a, there's a lot there's like hundreds of people working for you, and that's when you have to everything has to be perfect. And that's I understand. I understand. And at that point, I understand. I may understand people that says, "You know what? Let's play safe. Let's add some backing tracks so everything everything goes down well. And if there's any problem, 
we are all sorted and everybody will be happy and the show will go on that's it yeah but it's a it's about it's it, it i think it's a it, at the end of the day is a, is a personal is a strictly personal decision and um so far, I don't. I, I I always said no to that. I always said no to that. I I I played in bands when we had backing vocals recorded because you know the the, the were backing backing vocals were playing a big role in the music, and not all the musicians apart from me were able to sing. So I say, oh, there's a, we have a problem. So that, that's I understand it. But but then you have to play when when you make such decision, you have to be aware that you have to put everything on on click. And everybody has to know the part exactly as the record because that's how that is going. That's how it's going to be. Mm. Well, and, well, well, that that is true. That's completely true. Well, Jacopo, the, yeah. the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me. Um, yeah. Thanks for you. Thanks for your time. It's Sorry for the for the for the uh, you know cut yeah, down. No, don't worry. Don't worry. Breakdown. So, so, we so, made so, it. Hey, we made it at the, at the end. No, because sometimes it happens, the technology works, <laughs> it works very weirdly sometimes, I don't know. But uh, perhaps we want, congratulations on the new album. We did a review and we post a great score on our web. Uh, perhaps you. we want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalero followers. Well, I, I, I would love to come back because it's been a long time. It's been a long time. We, I think we were there in 2016, something like that. So it's been too much. Apps, 2016, no, even, no, 2014. It's almost 10 years that we we yes. miss South America. We've never been to Peru, so we have to come to Peru. And uh, we are looking for a, a, do you know a promoter? Yes. Who's willing to take tigers? Uh, we 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 can jump on a train on a plane anytime. We would love to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank well, you. and thank you because we've been there, and the, the audience is fantastic. Actually, if you have the 2016 album, uh, and you have the CDs, the the, the central photo is from São Paulo gig. Oh, it right? was Sao Paulo was a fantastic. The, the audience at Sao Paulo was absolutely mind blowing. It was I, I was I had shivers because the I got so much energy back that I was like, whoa, what is this? What's going on? What's happening? And uh, and I had this kind of experience a lot of when, during the whole tour, meaning that the the people are so passionate about music, like yeah. anywhere else.